Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Rectic. Today we are going to be getting started with Ender.io and be prepared. This is a long one. So today we're going to be working with some Ender.io machines. I would love to get started with Ender.io, but first we have a few things I want to talk about. So right here, you guys mentioned in the last episode that I messed up on my cables, which I absolutely did. I'm a total derp. I don't know why I did what I did. But anyways, I needed to run dense cable from my controller, which I should have just made. I don't know why I didn't do that. So I have uh, some dense smart cable running through here. And I have on this first connection, these separate um, from my, I have my basically my wireless terminal so I can access my wireless terminal. And then I have my, um, uh, whatever it's called, the protector block. I don't know why I can never remember the name of it. Um, but that thing's over there connected on its own network. That is using up two channels itself. And then I have this going up, which is utilizing the eight channels that we have right here. So one, two, three, four, but pretty much I have eight ME interfaces. The, the molecular assemblers uh, do not need, uh, they don't need anything from here, except except for power, which technically they get power from the ME interfaces. So they don't really need uh, to receive power from elsewhere, but that is working. These are on their own separate channel connected to the ME drives. So technically we have four and five. So there's five channels being used on our other two cables that are separate. And those are of course hooked up to the controller in a different way. And then of course, this is using one channel going directly down into the center, utilizing the center points um, from all the sides, but that's not important. So anyways, this will work for us for quite a while. And then I also ran some dense ME cable, um, smart cable all the way through the center here. You can barely see it, but it is running all the way through here and over there. We should be able to see it whenever it lights up and shows the channels. I think the channels show through. Um, I don't actually, uh, I haven't tested, so it may or may not. We may change this glass to something a little bit lighter so we can see through it, but there's several glass options that are really, really nice and completely clear, much like the dark glass, which I absolutely love. Also wanted to talk about this. So these are the roost I have set up. These are basically my slow trickle of EMC that is being uh, gained here. And this is just temporary because eventually we're going to have a nicer EMC producing setup. This is just to make sure that I may, I'm, I'm actually gaining EMC um, and I'm not wasting time there. But that's going into my personal EMC link block, which uh, I have both of these using flat transfer nodes automatically pulling the emeralds out and going directly into the personal EMC link, which is a new item. If you haven't already checked it out, awesome block. I mentioned at the end of one of my other videos, um, but I do recommend that you you use this if you're going to be putting EMC in here. Just keep in mind that this does not learn items. We did find that out. Maybe that'll be something that Latvian might add in the future to this mod. But for right now, um, basically it just whoever places it down, it's connected to their EMC, their personal EMC, which is connected to your uh, data, um, your player data. So it's just automatically feeding items in and gaining EMC from it, which is absolutely awesome. I give Latvian the much claps for that. Um, I absolutely love that. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with Ender.io and dive into this mod. So to get started, we're really going to need a few things. We're going to need a shear. We're going to need some grass. Not grass. We're going to need bone mill. Sorry. Bone mill. And we're also going to need... Um, technically, we need uh, dead bushes which you can technically get from saplings and you place saplings inside of an alloy smelter and it will give you dead bushes as an output. Um, there's also another way you can do this. Technically we only need one. So as soon as that produces, uh, we'll come back. But what I need to do right now is get some grass because Ender IO has a very particular way of doing things. Uh, now in this new update, we'll spread some grass. We'll auto shear that stuff. There we go. And uh, that's pretty much all we need. That's all we need there, because everything else can be EMC'd, right? So let's go ahead and throw that in there. Boom, we'll grab a stack of that. Oh, we can even learn our flowers here. And then we should be able to head back north. Also, I went ahead and did this. If you, uh, I kind of want to explain how this these screens work. Um, and I can kind of zoom in here for you guys to kind of see that. Um, what I'm using here is the screens from uh, Extra Utilities. You need some grid power, so you, you hear the water there. Um, but basically, I took a screenshot. And I cut it into three individual sections, uh, 64 by 64 a piece. 
So it's 192 pixels from for its length and its height is 64 pixels. So I split that in Photoshop into three separate pieces. And then if you place down this uh, screen first and then this screen and you, you go ahead and right click it and you, you set that uh, the image link, it will go ahead and place that one and then you'll place this image link. And then last but not least, you need to place this screen down and then you can set this one um, because otherwise it'll all connect as one solid screen and you don't want that because uh, the dimensions actually do not sync. You cannot upload a uh, a 64 by 192 uh, pixel image and it'll actually it won't it won't proportion correctly. Um, unfortunately, even though you think it would, it just it doesn't. I don't exactly know the, the exact proportions for it, but this is a way to work around that. And I want to get this set up for each each area. Basically, it'll have a screenshot of what the room is going to look like. So whenever we walk in, we know sort of what room we're going into. And that's just one thing. I could technically put a sign up there and have it say something as well. If I wanted to do that, you can actually customize and make your own images of Photoshop if you want to do that. Or you don't even have to use Photoshop. You can do that in GIMP or whatever free software you have. Uh, for me, I pay for Photoshop, so I, I have it at my disposal. Um, but GIMP and all that other the other free softwares, they work just the same. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to show that. That's actually a pretty neat little thing. Let's go ahead and grab our dead bush. And we'll also go ahead and get a stack of that now that we've learned it. Okay, perfect. Let's open up our inventory here and see what we actually need. We need to dive into some Ender IO. And you can see that this is why I absolutely love uh, the wireless setup here. I need to hit, turn that off A. Hit A on that, there we go. Um, but this is why I love this, because you can actually search in here and it updates up here, whereas in your actual terminal of Applied Logistics, it doesn't do that. So this is really nice um, using this terminal instead of that one. So let's go into Ender IO and we're gonna make a sag mill the good old early sag mill. And hopefully we have enough items. We need some flint and pistons, it looks like. I don't know about the simple machine. I don't think we have that. Oh, we already have a sag mill. I didn't know I made that. So we already have one, so that, that helps. So I'm gonna place this down here. I'm gonna hook up an energy conduit. I have my power running down here. Place that down and place this on top. And there we go, we have a sag mill. Perfect. What we can do with this is place some grass in here. This is gonna give us two different outputs. And we're really gonna want those outputs. I'm also gonna go ahead, I guess, and place a sag mill over here as well. So we can have two processes going on at once. Since we've already made these machines, might as well do that. So I'll throw the dead bushes over here. We need both of these going. We need uh, clippings and trimmings. And we're also going to need what the dead bush outputs, which is going to be twigs. So both of these have their uses in an alloy smelter, as you can see. So let's go ahead and take that. We'll grab a stack of each of these because all this has EMC value. Technically, I guess you could just do it this way. You don't even need that since it all has EMC. We can just throw that in there, grab a stack. We also need slime. And we're gonna start the alloy smelting process by throwing this in here and getting our die. That's the only way we can upgrade these machines into the next tier, which is uh, making industrial chassis. Started off, we use the machine chassis, but we need to make industrial die blend. And this is where we need organic green dye to make this. And then later on, we're gonna need the brown dye to get into some of the darker parts of Ender IO. But for right now, this should work. Let's go ahead and pull that out. And then this process is gonna start. Um, the unfortunate thing with if you acceleration wand this machine, it cannot power itself fast enough to maintain that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't work that well. But as you can see, there's our organic green dye. We're going to need a bunch of that. And we can go ahead and swap this out for our brown. And hopefully it'll make that. It's also going to do that, so... There we go, there's our organic brown dye, and we're pretty much done with the early parts of industrial, or uh, of Ender IO, which is really nice. Um, so I'm gonna have my machine set up here, and the reason I wanna set these up is because we might have some nice automation going to it, and I can have my machines in all these corners. I'm not gonna place them up against the wall, I don't think. I sorta of want them to be wrapped around this area here. 
And yeah, we're gonna do some cool things with this. So some other things that you might want to get grind down in inside these machines is of course, nether quartz and lapis. I already have some of both, but you need crushed lapis and that as well. And we're gonna go ahead and, and get some other things done. We also need some coal, which I have some in here. Uh, I guess pulverized coal. So I guess we don't really need it right now, but we might need it later on um, and we'll work on that. But right now, I think that should be enough of these processes. We're going to get these machines upgraded. I'm super excited. Once we hit this point, EMC uh, is going to kind of stop happening uh, for Ender.io. Ender.io is kind of different. Uh, let's get into the industrial machine chassis. So let's go ahead and make the dye for this. As you can see, this is going to require organic black dye as well, which this requires uh, pulverized coal and slime. So we already have coal. I just looked at that pulverized and slime. We don't really need much of this though. Uh, so this doesn't, this shouldn't take very long at all. We can probably tap it with the acceleration wand just to make our first little bits. There we go. And we'll grab that, throw that in there. And there's our industrial dye blend, right? Industrial dye, dye blend is going to be used for upgrading our simple machine chassis which are actually very simple, believe it or not. Uh, I think the only thing we need to make this is grains of infinity. I cleared out my AE, so we're gonna slowly but surely get stuff added in here. Um, but we do need grains of infinity thrown in there. That is used heavily. Uh, you should have got these from sieving, by the way. So definitely should have got those by sieving. Throw that in there. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a few of the machine chassis. And these are, of course, EMCable. All of this is allowing us to EMC, which is super nice. And like I said, just throw this in here. We have several 64K drives. So in Ender IO, should pull everything up. We're going to take some of these machine chassis right here. And we're going to get those upgraded with our new industrial dive blend. That is going to go inside here. We can go ahead and get that process finished. Throw this in with our industrial dye blend. And that is going to start processing. Oh yeah. And we can tap this a couple times, get that to process. And there's our industrial machine chassis. But as you can see, this actually does not have EMC. So we are hitting a kind of a, a stopping point there on what, can, what has EMC and what doesn't. A lot of stuff in here is not supported by it. So that's why I said you have to sort of figure out what you're going to want. And once you make the machine, you'll be happy you did. But some things just don't have EMC. So a lot of the machines definitely don't. Once you get past the basic ones anyways. One of the first machines I'd probably like to upgrade would probably be the simple alloy smelter. So I'm going to go ahead and get this to finish its process. And let's go ahead and upgrade this. I mean, we can upgrade all of these while we're at it. Um, I'm really only going to need one sag mill, I think. I don't know why I would need more than one, um, but we should be able to completely upgrade these directly. We are going to need some dark steel, which we do have. Um, and we're going to start our process of going through uh, what I would call like an e uh, uh, Indrio EMC uh, tier of gears. There is a specific amount of gears that you're going to have to make. Uh, bimetal gears, all kinds of different gears. That That is a thing. So let's start here. Dark steel. We're going to need infinity gears. If we can make those. I'm pretty sure we have everything but nuggets. To make this, let's get a couple of nuggets. And there we go. There's our infinity bimetal gear. Of course, this is EMCable. So we're going to take some of those out. And we're going to upgrade those to the dark metal, dark bimetal gears. Also EMCable. And then from there, they will be upgraded. But for right now, we don't really need any more. Let's go ahead and get the alloy smelter done. We need a couple furnaces. And that's about it. A cauldron. Is that including? That, that needs two to update. So I guess we're not going to be upgrading. We're just going to go with one. So there's our one alloy smelter. Really nice. We can go ahead and throw that in here. And then a sag mill is going to be the next thing that we want to get, which is hiding down here. There it is. 
We need some flint. I don't think that's the only thing I don't have is flint. Flint, where are you? Do you do I not have flint? Yeah, I do. There we go. And we'll throw that in. Go ahead and make our sag mill. We should have everything but a piston, I think. We can make one. And then we well, we also have this down here. Which also works. We can just put our simple one there, and that, that saves us some time. Awesome. So now we have our alley smelter and our sag mill. Nice. Uh, we're going to throw both of these in here. I might actually go with two alloy smelters uh, versus the sag mill. The sag mill is not as important to me as an alloy smelter is. We can get things done way faster with two alloy smelters. So I'm probably going to go that route. Probably have two of them just to keep them nice and even. There we go. We'll have our alloy smelters down here. Sag mill right in the center. Perfect. Now, these things need capacitors, and we're fixing to get into making capacitors. The first step for the capacitor is going to be making our tier one, and we do have some other add-ons. I wanted to get into Ender.io because they're, it's an update. Uh, there's several different things in here, um, like Stellar stuff, which looks absolutely amazing. If it's any better than the Dark Steel, the Dark Steel alone is crazy. But getting into these other conduits and stuff just sound so much fun. Like they sound like so much fun. And I can't wait to see how much more powerful these other capacitors are. So our base tier is this. We need to actually make some energetic alloy, which we don't have yet. So we pretty much need to fill this with basic tier just to get them powered at first to get them to, to run. But we're gonna need redstone, glowstone, and gold. in order to make what I want to make now, which is gonna be the energized. So that'll that'll start working pretty slow because we don't have a fast uh, capacitor in there yet, an upgraded capacitor. And the other one, I want ender pearls and iron being uh, produced over here. Um, and this is going to make, we look over here in the alloy smelter, this is going to be making pulsating iron. Pulsating iron is later on going to be helpful for us for making item condoms and things like that. Um, and then if we take a look at this vibrant alloy, we're gonna have to be mixing these later on as well once we get our first bit of vibrant alloy or energetic alloy. I think I have, I don't know if I have one of these done yet. Let's go ahead and get that to finish up. There we go, there's our pulsating. I think I have pulsating in here. No, I didn't. See? That's why we needed that pulsating. Uh, now I need to also save this because now we're going to switch up gears and we're going to do ender pearls and energetic alloy and that's going to get us upgraded even more. So let's upgrade these regular capacitors into double layer capacitors. It's going to require some pulverized coal, but we have the EMC'd. So there's a double layer capacitor. As you can see, now we have those. And last but not least, we need to get this processing. And there's some vibrant alloy. Ah, gotta love that. Super nice, get some vibrant alloy in here. And we'll now have octatic capacitors just like that. Super, super fast. And we've pretty much upgraded all of our machines to, I guess, close to the top tier. It's still not top tier yet. Um, because I see more capacitors that are a little bit more fancy. So there we go, we can kind of clear this out and perfect. And now all this can be EMC'd. Uh, even Enderios can be EMC'd. Um, Enderios are kind of interesting <laughs> in themselves. If you eat them, yeah, there's a chance you can teleport. It's a, yeah, there's a very small chance, but if you read here, uh, it says not actually healthy. Contains 253 grams of sugar 53 grams of fat, and 394 grams of inner dust. Now, I don't know, I still haven't figured out why exactly he uses those particular numbers, but I think there might be a reason. If you guys know, let me, down, let me know down in the comments. 
but the side effects of Indurio dust include nausea, dizziness, confusion, and random teleporting. I have not experienced any of the other ones except for teleporting, so I don't can't vouch for that one. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, that is pretty much getting upgraded to Octatic Capacitors. Um, and that's getting through the main part of Indurio. Pretty fast, right? As long as you have EMC, it's pretty, pretty fast. All right. Now, moving forward, I do really want a painting machine or a painter. Um, that is a definite <laughs> is a painting machine. This is going to require electrical steel. Um, and we should know how to make electrical steel because we've made it before. I don't know if we have it saved, but iron coal and silicon iron coal and some good old-fashioned silicon from Indurio. so right we can go ahead and throw this in here pap that with a acceleration wand electrical steel like it was nothing and then we'll throw that into our table. Just make sure we have some. Bam! That is fast. That is fast. Now, Indurio is going to get us started with the painting machine. Which is require an infinity bimetal gear, which we should have. We should have everything for this. And there we go. Ah, nice. We now have a painting machine. Which is actually a pretty interesting machine in itself. Uh, let's go ahead and break this down. Oh, we're not actually going that deep. We can just place it here. Right above ground. Perfect. Uh, this cable might need to be changed soon. Right now it's not much of an issue. But it will need to be changed eventually. Let's go ahead and put our bit blocks back. And there's a painting machine. This thing also needs an octatic capacitor. There it is. I'm trying to figure out what's the fastest way to search for this. And yeah, we can pretty much paint any block. You want to paint, paint uh, a chassis? I think you can. If you want to paint anything to look like Eternalist Fuel, you could do that. Let's do glow, Glowstone. Like paint Eternalist Fuel Glowstone. So you paint, put the block you want to be paint here, and the block you want to paint here, and it'll turn that into a painted version of that block, and this will actually emit light. It'll look like the Eternalist Fuel block, right? But it's not. It's it's just glowstone. Just glowstone. But it's glowstone you can break. Which is even nicer. But this is also how you paint conduit facades and all kinds of good stuff like that. But the painter is definitely something I want to get into. So the next material I want to make is actually going to push these machines to their next tier. There are three tiers as far as I know. Um, and we're going to need a few things. We're going to need some instone. Dark steel, and we're also gonna need obsidian. That's just to get the alloy that we need. I'm gonna throw this in here. I'm gonna acceleration this a little bit. These other tiers can it be acceleration wanded like that, which is really nice. And you can see we get in steel ingots, which also can be EMC, which we're gonna do. Do a couple stacks of that. And we're going to use that to upgrade our machines here. You can see we also need the enhanced version, which requires instill chassis. So let's take a look at what it takes to make an instill chassis. It's actually not that bad. And they also need enhanced dye, which requires these grains of uh, pili... Or what is it called? Pizality? Pizality? Which is a pulsating crystal, right? Uh, in a sag mill. So... We can we should be able to make pulsating crystals. That's something we can probably go ahead and get started. Right? And this can require require quartz powder and more black dye. Let's make this. I know we have pulsating in here, don't we? Maybe not. Let's just go ahead and get some. 
perfect. And at in IO, enhanced machines, super useful here. Save the pulsating crystals. All right, we'll let that do its thing. That's gonna grab those. I'm kind of curious, like I've actually not gotten this far into Ender IO by pushing it to this limit where you have the uh, enhanced versions. But it's gonna be pretty interesting to see how this goes, All right? I need to make instill bars, make a couple of those because we need to make this chassis. Now these can be EMC'd, which is kind of interesting because the other ones can't. But whenever, of course, whenever we uh, throw this in the alloy smelter with all the other ingredients that we need, it probably won't. Yeah, once we need this dust, it won't actually do that. So let's throw that in there. That'll progress up. Let's go ahead and get those bad boys done. And yeah, this does not have EMC in it. So, we should be able to use this. Also, we need some vibrant. Um, we need some vibrant alloy. Broke down. Pretty sure I had some vibrant in here. Unless I've used it all. That's probably what happened. And we'll take it, that'll upgrade from an infinity bimetal gear. Go ahead and just throw those in there. Bam. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I know I'm probably going fast, but too fast. I don't want to do that. So three of those, right? This will get an advanced alloy smelter. So there's our enhanced alloy smelter. So big that it even hides, hides the stuff. I'm going to make two of them, I guess. Do I really need to? I don't think I need to. I only need one. What am I doing? I only need one. Uh, let's go ahead and make the enhanced sag mill as well. I just want to see if this stuff is faster than thermal expansions. Honestly, <laughs> that's what I really want to look at. Um, and the enhanced vat, the combustion generator. I don't, I don't see the like you, uh, the vat I definitely probably want pressurized fluid tanks let's take a look at the vat because I know this is something that I definitely want to have pressurized fluid tanks requires hardened glass I think there's another version which is um the quartz so if you take some if you take some quartz and throw it in an alley smelter it should give you an alloy version, which is technically fused quartz, which should work the same. That should work for this. Yes, fused quartz definitely works. We'll take two of those. And we'll make the vat, which we're missing a cauldron. Looks like my tanks didn't disappear, it just doesn't want to make them. There we go. So there's some enhanced machines. <laughs> These are very large, by the way, if you haven't seen them. Let's go ahead and break these. These probably need more power. I don't think these cables are gonna, gonna cut it. Um, so we can make some better cables. I better get inside my view here. And let's just make some higher tier conduits. Do we not? We should have conduit binder laying around in here. So let's make, what does this, it goes up even higher, I believe, because I think there's some new ones. Look at this. Stellar energy conduit outputs. Look how much power that outputs. 20 billion or a tick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, 
and then we go up even further. I'm actually excited to get into some of this stuff. For right now, I'm gonna make this. Go ahead and learn those. And we'll just remove this conduit for right now. I wish there was like an enhanced painter that just worked super fast. That all that works. Well, we still need one up here, so there we go. All right, and we should be able to place down all of our enhanced machines. So enhanced alloyer, throw that there. Enhanced vat. I guess we can throw this to the side. Well, we'll put it in the center for right now. And then this is our sag mill, right? Or this is our alloy and our sag mill. Okay, doesn't really matter. Um, they kind of look like <laughs> robots with that top bit being there. Um, and then we'll go ahead and we'll just right click this on our machines and that will upgrade them. I want to see how fast is this on the alloy smelter because there's a few things that we need to make, right? We need to make some upgraded alloys, which I'm kind of excited to make. Ender IO. Let's pop in here. Let's take a look at those new alloys. So crude steel is one of them. Cobblestone, gravel. Yeah, cobblestone, gravel, and clay. So cobble. Gravel and clay. This would be like super beginning power if you wanted to do that. Pretty fast. That didn't give me exactly what I thought it would give me. There it goes, crude steel. Okay, so that's done. Uh, then we go into crystalline alloy, which is grains and gold. I have some on me, so that's actually pretty easy. That's a little bit slower. So there's that crystalline alloy. All right, and we'll move on to the next one, which is melodic alloy. Popped chorus fruit and in steel. Not, not too difficult. So, in steel, and popped coarse fruit, seems pretty decent to me. I say, is it using a lot of power? I don't, it just looks like it's not filling with power fast enough. This holds four million, oof. Okay, so there's that. So last but not least, we should have Stellar Alloy. Nether Star, Melodic, and Clay. Okay. So Nether Star, Clay. Of course, EMC makes this way faster, so in a normal playthrough, this would be kind of a hard recipe, I believe. But this takes a little bit longer as well to cook up. And you get stellar. Pretty nice. Pretty nice there. And there's our stellar. Four million. Huh. It's actually... That's interesting. For one... 69. Wow. This is cheaper than a nether. <laughs> this is cheaper to to pull out the alloy than it is the nether star, even though it required a nether star to make it. It's interesting. Hmm. All right. So I guess it would technically lose some of its uh, nether starness as it's being cooked. 
But we have Nether Star Alloy. Uh, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, we have oh, we have other stuff here. That is crystallized pink slime. Okay, so pink sliming it. That's something that is not EMCable, I don't think. As far as I know, it's not. No, it's not. But our energetic silver, just silver glowstone, redstone. So we need some silver. Glowstone and redstone. And that'll make us another alloy. Glowstone, redstone, and silver. And then we have a vivid alloy, which is that energetic stuff with uh, with this. Okay, so that seems to be just about all of the different pieces here. And then we take this and we hook that in with an ender pearl. Ender pearl in here. Boy, your inventory's full. Ender pearl in one of these bad boys. And that'll notice that vivid. All of which, this stuff is really, really cool. Having new stuff to ender IO is. is Kind of intriguing. It's definitely sparking my interest. Revitalizing things in here. Okay. So, Stellar. What can you do with this stuff? Well, for one thing, you can make some armor. You can make a Stellar Capacitor, which needs a Shulker Shell. And it requires this upgrade here. I wonder just how much faster this thing can go when we get to a Stellar Capacitor, right? So the base one's gonna require prismarine. We st oh, it's an upgrade to the octatic capacitor. Okay. So an upgrade to the octatic capacitor, which would require all the things that we pretty much got. Um, going back, right? That requires two of those and the crystalline alloy. I don't think I have any prismarine crystals. Because I never, of course, sift a sponge. Um, oh, I can, pul I can pulverize this. Can I sag mill as well? Yes. So, prismarine. Throw that in the sag mill. Boom. Prismarine. Look at that. Easy. Easy mode. And there's an upgraded capacitor. And we'll just continue to do this. Oh my goodness. What was it? Uh, vivid. Or not the alloy. Stellar, right? So, the Stellar Capacitor. There's the Melodic. And last but not least, we need a Shulker Shell. Now, you can get a Shulker Shell. It may be a little weird to see how you get it, but there's actually a doll. And you're going to need a floating doll, I believe, and some Witch Water. Looks like we need some Porcelain. Do I have dolls in here? I have porcelain. Porcelain floating doll. I don't have ender pearls in my system. Which makes total sense. It's going to make the porcelain doll itself. Nice. And a floating one. Make a couple of them just in case. A um, couple of ancient spores. A little bit of dirt. And we're just going to get this guy to spawn and we're going to take him out. We should be able to do that pretty easy. Uh, we still need a barrel. Let's 
still need a barrel. And there we go. All right. Let's place some of this down. If you make a five by five, that's like the fastest this thing will work. We'll go ahead and throw down the ancient spore. Use an acceleration wand on this bad boy to spread all of that. If it'll ever decide to spread to the corners, which I don't know why it's not. Okay, maybe the light level, something like that. Anyways, let's go ahead and place down this. We can fill it with water. Acceleration one, this. Bam. And then we need to right click one of these dolls onto here. I might need my bow on me. But you right click the doll, and then you can actually acceleration one, this as well. Oh boy. He went somewhere. Where did he go? There he is. So pretty much need to take him out. Please don't. And there we go. And we got a shulker shell. Awesome. All of that for that one particular thing in which we got it. Nice. I'll go ahead and leave that there. So, last but not least, we need the shulker shell. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Save the shulker shells. And we're going to go ahead and make that stellar capacitor. Boy, this thing looks phenomenal. And is this the top tier capacitor? It looks like it is. There is no other crafting recipe for it. So this thing is pretty nice. So what we're going to do is swap out all the capacitors in each of these machines. And see exactly how fast this makes this. Doesn't even look like that's working. That should be able to paint even dirt. But it's not letting me. It's weird. Um, let's get some quartz. Good way to test this, I guess. Throw some quartz in the alley smelter. That's pretty fast. It's doing three items at a time, so I mean, I would have to say that's pretty fast. But that's probably as fast as you're going to get with, with Ender IO at this point. I don't know if it's faster than thermal, but it's pretty fast. So when it comes to armor, I don't think I want to stick with Wyvern for very long or even go to Draconic. Draconic would be great gear to have, but everybody does Draconic. It's just overdone. I want to try something different. There's so many armor options in this pack um, that I really want to try some other things. Um, wow, this exosuit helmet actually looks really cool. I've not actually seen that Psy helmet. Um, but anyways, there's so many armor options, and I really want to use that Psy Metal, or not Psy Metal, Stellar uh, Alloy Ingot to make armor. And this armor is actually really, really crazy powerful. Um, if we take a look at this. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get to Ender.io again. And let's take a look at what it takes to actually make this armor, because it's pretty extensive. We're basically going to need a witch, a soul vial with a witch, and an internet or an internet, an ender resonator. The ender resonator, of course, is going to require a slice and splice. And this is why I needed that soul cage earlier. And we needed that soul entombed die, which requires, of course, more nether, uh, nether quartz and that brown powder. And then we need some soul powder, which is going to require some solarium. So, with all that being said, soul sand and gold. That's one of the, like, one alloy we did not make this whole time. So let's throw this in here. Look how fast that alloy is now. Oh, my. That is pretty insane. And let's see how fast it actually pulverizes. Um, I have to say, this is probably faster than thermal. That's instant. Like, that's immediate. And I don't even have the grinding upgrade balls in here. 
That's instant. <laughs> That's pretty insane. Um, but yeah, that is what we're going to need. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course, like I said, we needed that to be fast because this right here is actually not an EMCable item. So keep that in mind. Some of these things just are not EMCable. Right? So get this license splice. We need the soul binder. We need this uh this dust here, this soul attuned stuff. And I think it even goes as far as requiring us to I think we have to use a basic simple machine chassis, yeah. Good old fashioned simple machine. I don't know if I have it in here. Yeah, I do. Awesome, and we can alloy that together. There's our machine chassis. And yeah, we pretty much just need to make um, the soul binder and a slice and splice. Soul binder should be pretty easy to make. I'm pretty sure we have Enderman head. Very, very easy there. There's a soul binder. And we also need a slice and splice. Uh, energized by Metal Gear, I don't think we have, so need to make that. Now we do have it, so there we go. Uh, this is going to require pretty much all that other stuff that we made, and now we have a slice and splice. Pretty nice. We'll go ahead and extend our power over to here. Painting machine, you can you, you can actually go somewhere else. I don't need you exactly right now. We will use you later and probably somewhere else than here. Okay, so I need my conduits. Just to run my power over. That's already set up. Put the soul binder here and a slice and splice right here. Perfect. Now this is where we're going to need another capacitor. Look at that. Two of these top tier capacitors in these bad boys. Man oh man are we about to be rocking this. So we need an axe. Just a good old iron axe be fine. Shear. Will also work. Throw those inside here. And this machine is ready to go. Uh, now all we need is all the ingredients. In order to produce this thing. We should be good, right? Uh, so let's get started. To work towards this armor. Man, I am super excited. Uh, to get a witch shouldn't be too difficult. We'll work on that. But solarium, silicon, vibrant alloy, and an enderman head. Right. We should all have that. Vibrant. Solarium. Silicon. This is like a memory game. And uh, enderman head. All of those together. You should be able to keep them like in a line. And as long as you put the Enderman head first, it should automatically complete. And it will actually generate it right away. So if you put all this stuff in a row, you'll just it'll just work. I guess you can keep it in your hotbar. <laughs> Would probably be better. Oh no, it's shift clicking into my inventory. Either way, we have now an Ender head. All right, so to move on, we need soul vials. And we should be able to make a soul vial pretty easy. There's an empty soul vial. Let's go ahead and learn that. That works. And I'm pretty much going to remove a torch from one of my other rooms. And yeah, we're going to head here. I'm going to head into one of these rooms, remove my torch. Let some mob spawn, and we're looking for a witch in particular. Now, Stellar, I think these all require the sentient for all pieces. So yeah, we're going to need four witch, uh, witches, so wish me good luck. Guys, there it is. There's our witch. And we've captured it. So yeah, I was trying my best to, to pretty much get a witch, uh, witch to spawn 
And this is probably the fastest way, is just to set up a little pile here of some cursed earth, and yeah, just let them spawn away. But yeah, we ended up getting our witch. We're gonna use this in a very special way very soon. So let's get out of here. Turn off my night vision. I don't need that stuff anymore. Ugh. And we're also affected by poison, of course, for several seconds. But anyways, all we needed was one witch, and that's gonna work perfect. Well, guys, we ended up getting pretty far. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It was quite long, I know. I know, 50 minutes is, is a pretty long episode. Um, <laughs> but uh, I really wanted to go over some of the new Inter.io stuff. I think we're gonna really kick off next episode with some really cool mechanics, and uh, I really, really want to get this armor. And uh, I want to try the Chaos Chicken in this new armor that we get. I really want to see how effective it is against the Chaos Chicken. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget, forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And guys, I will hope to see you guys in the next episode. As always, thanks for watching.